Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So for today, we're going to have fun recreating a similar look I did a while ago, but adding another look to it. So we're going to be playing around with this technique that I love where I kind of erase things and add the bokeh technique. Yes, really fun, super easy, any skill level, and the, the outcome is so beautiful, so pretty. Trust me, you'll love doing this. And if you're a Patreon member, you get the bonus one. So yes, if you're a Patreon member, you get that. If you want to be a Patreon member, you can click the link in my uh, description box, to join my Patreon. You can cancel and join anytime. I have extended videos, uh, exclusive tutorials, ad free, live stream, all this good stuff. And like I said, you can find it in the description box. But here on YouTube, we have this wonderful tutorial today on how to do this. Um, like I said, combining two looks, the bokeh and the lovely uh, kind of like a racing kind of technique that I love to do that I'm kind of, I love and have fun playing florals this way. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Let's just have fun painting with color. There's no traces, no nothing. This is simple shapes and paintbrushes and strokes that you can do to create super easy and wonderfully beautiful cards. Let's get going. All right, so let's go over some supplies. I have a piece of arsh paper, 100% cotton cold press, taped down with some Scotch magic tape on a thick piece of cardboard. And I've got some color already mixed up. I mix um, a deeper green with Prussian blue, Cabernet Yellow Deep, and a little burnt umber. We're gonna use burnt umber also for this. And there's a couple of techniques I wanna play around with this. It's kind of like a washing technique and a bokeh technique at the same time. Uh, I've done some similar cards before like this, so let's play around with a little combination and let's see if it comes out the way I want it to. I like to do real-time videos. Sometimes you like to see exactly how it comes out. <laughs> so loosen up some, um, this is burnt umber. I might add a little pants gray to it, make it a little bit deeper, like a nice brown. And we'll just make like a nice branch kind of coming here. We'll add some branches off of that. Just really kind of simple, right? From there, we can make some simple holly leaves. Again, I'm gonna go and grab, I'm gonna mix a little bit brighter green here, but darker green might be actually better. So I'm gonna grab some Prussian blue, thick. I don't, we need a fair amount of paint. And we're brushing in burnt umber. All right, so then the typical holly shape like this, right? Bump, bump, it's like little mountains. And grab them. One, two, one, two, three. You can tweak it, making it more perfect, right? Fill that in. Actually, I could use actually a bigger brush. I could use my number twelve. Really get in there and just fill it in faster. I feel like the twelve Princeton Neptune series is my go-to brush. Now it's getting a little wet. Too much water. I'm gonna fill this in. Again, trying to be a little bit more precise, filling it in, keeping it a little bit damp and wet. Maybe make this a little bit bigger. The, this, the uh, eight long round is great for making it a little more precise. So maybe I'll go back to that one. I did want it to fill it in faster, but Hey, sometimes faster isn't everything. So filling this in, making this holly, kind of go in here. A great color to use for the berries would be this color called Pyro Rubin, which I've been using a lot of. I'm just kind of filling these holly leaves in. Like so. Mine are coming out kind of goofy today. I feel like I'm just kind of burnt out of painting, <laughs> so they're coming out goofy. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, maybe like another, I don't know. I think I'll just put berries in there. So this color right here, Pyro Rubin, fantastic red color. We can start to just put some red berries in. Circular circles obviously, and clusters, threes like this. I'm gonna have to add some more greens. I feel like it's not enough. And a lighter green, why not? Like add some more yellow. Let's get in here and put some like 
evergreen kind of shapes. You can do like an evergreen. So you just put a line down and just put these little dashes. Let's get a little creative here. Put some in here. I want more color. And kind of coming here. And that's the premise. So I did this technique where I kind of wash away the design. Now you have to wait till it kind of dries a little bit. Not super dry though. You want it kind of a little still wet so that you're not mushing everything completely and turns into mushy brown, right? Don't want that. And you want a pretty stiff brush. So I might grab like a 12 aqua lead or something a little stiffer, right? I can see right now that the berry is still a little wet. So maybe I'm going to go and add a little more detail. I want that berry to soak in a little bit more. Let me have some like greenery coming here. By the way, for the bokeh, you can use paper towel, remove the color, or a paintbrush, or we can play around with washing in some really kind of simple, loose gouache. I love the way the gouache dissipates on the painting. Okay, so let's see. We're gonna mush it. I can still see that pyrrole is still sitting there. I want it to kind of seep in, but we're gonna do this thing where we take the water itself. See, grabbing the brush with the water itself. And kind of mushing what we painted. That's why you need a stiffer brush. I'm mushing it. It's just a really fun technique. Try not to get the red just yet. Just doing the green part. Why is that? Because we don't want it to be, you know, red and green make brown. We don't want mud. So I'm kind of avoiding the red for now. Just hitting my greens. And while you're doing that, you can actually go back in and add some green, see? So it's kind of washed away, but then you add all oh, the joy. Now see how I'm still avoiding that red because it's so wet already. I'll get in there in a second, going around it as much as I can. Okay, I'm like adding, look at that, it's all washed away there, but you can still kind of see the, the pine needles a little bit. Okay, here we go with the red. Now I'm kind of mushing it. See, now it won't turn so much into brown. Isn't that fun? Now I'll take some water. See, I'm tapping back in paper towel. Mushing. Not too much. Mushing. Boom. And maybe you want to just mush around the area. I'm tapping back in the paper towel. I don't want to mush too much. I want some red. See, now it's turned brown there, right? Grab my yellow, my bright green, go in there. It's going to be like a brownish green in there. See, that's what I'm saying. Wait till the end. Now, it's fairly wet. This is the time when you use the gouache. Or if you want the bokeh. The bokeh, because it's so wet, you can take a paper towel, scrunch it up, and get that round removal of color. Right? If you want to make a bigger, bigger circle, the bokeh kind of look to it. Cool, right? It's a combo of the two. <laughs> You're not going to get a perfect round circle, but you can try. It's removing the paint. All right? Perfect round circle. Now I'll try and put a little gouache in there and we'll see what happens. Not too much, don't go crazy. Especially in the wet areas, if it's dry. Now it's gonna do this dissipate thing and it's gonna come out really cool. So now we have this kind of like abstract kind of Christmas design. You know, you can still see the holly leaves all that good stuff and the gouache is just going to do this thing where it's going to go shh and it kind of like just has that bokeh look to it when it dries if you use a really stiff brush um, I wouldn't use a really good one like the aqua elite you can use just kind of like a crappy or oh, even like an old Princeton I have this like select series to remove paint and again you just do like a circular see tap back on your paper towel I'm going to do a big circle. 
and you've got the big circle for the bokeh. That's kind of how you do it. You remove it. I like the one that's right there. I might try and get one out here. Cool, right? Um, maybe you want to remove some paint around your little lovely berries because you've lost your berry. Where did the berry go? And you can go back in and paint it. There's no rules that has to say that has to remain empty. Look at that. Really kind of pretty, right? Isn't that pretty? And look how long it took us! Like five minutes, six minutes? It's super easy. Let's try another fun one. Now, everyone on the planet has done, you know, an evergreen branch with a ball hanging from it. So why not me, right? Let's just continue the continuum of this scenario. And we'll mix up some nice deep green, yellow, Prussian blue, burnt umber. We've got the same colors again. Picture like a swiping, sweeping little branch. Woo! And then of course your evergreen. I'm using the eight long round again. Look at that. Just push down and get these nice. You really almost see the the thickness of the paint is gonna matter. Why? You're not gonna have these nice dry brush strokes with it. I have the tutorial from last week with um, greens and how to paint greens. So here you're just doing a swiping movement, but because it's thicker paint, less water, you can go like this and you have these nice dry brush strokes because of this paper and the, the tooth on the paper. Look how pretty that is. I mean, you just did that. A couple of those for a Christmas card, right? But we're gonna get real creative here. We're gonna just knock down a little ball. <laughs> Pyro red comes in handy. Um, but I will add a little couple of like brighter light greens again, like the other one we did here variety this is spice of life so again a little bit thicker but a little bit light i mean a little bit looser than this one come down here i'll add some little evergreens kind of here maybe kind of sweeping down this way so it's not such one little branch boring kind of branch kind of hanging down and i'll add a little deeper green in this one you see that right there super card right merry christmas would that take you five seconds let's get our ball with the pyro red pyro <laughs> so we'll have a nice big ball here circle you can do the the cap to it in different color like a like a gold metallic whatever um maybe this shining from this side so we'll leave a white halo kind of fill it in just like this I'm not sure if I'd add a deeper color at this point. Now, if you wanted a gold color, I have gold gouache somewhere in my repertoire. I uh, have to find that. Or you could use gold acrylic ink. This one's stuck. The bottle's stuck. <laughs> Let me find my gold gouache. It's found. It's found. It's just so dry and, you know, ugh. So I'm going to grab some of that. Again, a little bit of water. You can see it over here. It's just, it's almost like gouache the way it's so thick. I'm trying to activate this. You do want to use an ink or a paint. You can actually use gouache if you want to use gouache. I mean, I'm using watercolor. And do our little cap, gold cap. Okay. And you can add like a little, we'll add a little line to it in a bit. Same premise. And by the way, get that gold activated. You could use that splattering. See, I'm really kind of activate this gold. It doesn't want to play today. Um, like we did with the gouache, and it has a nice little look to it. Metallic is great. Use metallic paints. So, stiff a brush, kind of clean water. This is pretty much dry, and we're gonna try and do a little erase movement here. Swish it around, oh, look at that. Such a nice, subtle way to paint something. Don't you find that? 
kind of smoosh it. See, I'm going back and I can remove it and paper towel. It's already softened. It's already pretty. Now the ball, of course, we wait till the last minute because why? We don't want mud, do we? No, we don't. Look at that. So it shows the line still, but you're kind of erasing it. It's just one of my things that I love to do. Okay, let's go for the ball. Let's have a ball with a ball. See, now I'm going to clean this up. It's getting a little muddy here. I'm cleaning this up. Okay, let's start to erase it a little bit. See what we have. Removing some of the, the red. Oh, fun, fun. Now it's all red down here. Keeping it in one section. I really actually want to really remove it. So I'm going to take my paper towel and kind of really kind of play with removing it. Look at the energy you're getting with this. Like it's almost a race from the planet, right? Creating that cool texture, cleaning it up. Look at that. I love it. Get some clean water in here. Again, we can do the bokeh thing with a stiffer brush. Uh, where did I lose my brush? Here we go. So this is that Princeton brush that's stiffer. Or paper towel it. <laughs> Either way, works for you. The paper towel really is instantly gratifying. But... Sometimes it's not as soft. See, we're moving in circular motion. I've tried the masking fluid way. I'm not fond of it. Why? Because you don't know. Like it's kind of intuitive painting when you're doing something like this. You might not like where those circles were, right? And then it's kind of like too late. This way, you have a. You really can see where you want to put them. Look at that already, so cool. Oops, I had green paint on here. But removing with paper towel. This is zero effort, people. Come on, don't tell me you can't do this. I'm yelling on the video because I know you can do it. I know it, right? And then if we could take the gouache. I know, while well, it's still damp. Do little splatters, little ones. Oh, the joy. And look at that. Look how pretty and soft. That's all it is. Seriously, did it take any effort for those two cards? Zero. Zero. You can get a little more creative with your cap. Um, go back in and use your brush and create. Uh, I'm sorry. You can see it better and then add like a little, I'm going to grab the paint's gray or something, the little hook kind of going in there and adding a little shadow little line so you can actually see like the hook in there see how i did that but look that took zero effort and it's so pretty and remember i talked about the gold you could always splatter some gold metallic for a nice metallic gold effect you can see a little bit of it kind of popping out here and there i just really like this technique it's just really great and just clean up around here let it dry we have a beautiful card. Oops. It's okay. Some paper ripped up. That usually never happens for me. <laughs> if it does, don't freak out. You know what you do? You go back with some paint. And you just kind of tweak it. No one will ever know. Nope. See? Fixed. Done. None. Two great cards. Super simple. Took no time at all. You guys can totally do this. Try this technique. You might love it. And like I said, for the Patreon members, you get a little extra bonus one. All right, guys. Take care. Thanks for coming by my channel. Please subscribe. Please subscribe and please comment. You know, it just helps my channel. If you like my channel, I appreciate it. And share it. Let everybody know where you're getting your cards from. Okay. All right. Thank you. Take care and I'll speak to you soon.